Let's start with number 10 and BP, the oil giant, asking a U.S. court to reconsider a ruling that found it grossly negligent for the 2010 Gulf of Mexico oil spill. The ruling, which was announced last month, boosted its potential liabilities to as much as $18 billion. BP says the ruling was based on evidence the judge had said he wouldn't consider. Scarlett? All right, that price tag keeps going up. Number nine, Facebook. The social network plans to keep experimenting with how its service affects users' behavior just more responsibly. Facebook said in a blog post that it's given researchers clear guidelines to follow when studying sensitive topics. At number eight is American Airlines. The world's largest airline wants to take over Delta's flight rights to Tokyo. In a regulatory filing yesterday, American said its smaller rival isn't making the best use of access to Japan's Neda Airport. If America, American wins this spot, it would operate year-round flights between Los Angeles and Haneda. All right, well, number seven, guys, is Disney. Chairman and CEO Bob Iger, uh, he's not going anywhere anytime soon. He's going to stay at the helm for two more years, and he's not going to retire in June 2016, as previously planned. Disney will also name a chief operating officer next year who could eventually replace Iger, said a person familiar with the matter. He's having too much fun. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you, as head of Disney? Well, and his performance has been great. Exactly. So. Well, Investors want him there, right? Hi. Right? All right, number six is Salix Pharmaceuticals. The government's crackdown on tax inversions does appear to be working. The North Carolina-based company and Italy's Cosmo Pharmaceuticals canceled a $2.7 billion merger agreement citing the tougher rules. Salix is now in talks to sell itself to activists, according to people familiar with the matter. Of course, activists itself is a potential target for Pfizer, and it's also reached out to Allergan, if you can keep track of all that. I know, that. hard to keep it all straight. It is. Uh, number five is Lynn Energy. The oil and natural gas producer is selling $2.3 billion worth of acreage and facilities in Texas and Oklahoma in two separate deals. Those sales will help fund its purchase of Devon Energy assets. Speaking of deal making, that's a deal that closed in August. Number four, guys, is UBS. Switzerland's biggest bank could be hit with a hefty fine. The company may face a $6.2 billion penalty in a French probe of allegations that it helped clients evade taxes, according to a person with knowledge of the matter. UBS shares taking a hit on that news. Number three, ExxonMobil. The energy giant, one of the first major U.S. companies to address the business impact of the Ebola outbreak. CEO Rex Tillerson announcing Exxon is delaying plans to start offshore drilling in some areas of West Africa. The company bought an 80% stake in an oil project off the coast of Liberia last year. Number two is Radio Shack. The struggling electronics chain has gotten a lifeline. It reached a deal to refinance $590 million of loans so it can restock for the holidays. According to a person familiar with the matter, the money comes from a group headed by hedge fund Standard General. So buying it a little more time. That's right. And at number one, guys, is J.P. Morgan. This is scary. The bank revealing new details on the cyber attack that was originally reported back in August. J.P. Morgan says hackers access data on 76 million households and 7 million small businesses. We're going to dive deeper into the data breach in just a few moments. It is scary as you hear more and more about these uh, hack attacks at, at firms and companies that you use, right? Apparently they got it through an employee's password. That's oh how they got access to the server.